Hello, everybody. Welcome at the first Kong Summit. Are you caffeinated enough? <laughs> Let me repeat. Are you caffeinated enough? <laughs> yeah. So that's good because they're going to tell you something crazy. API management is dead. API management is dead. And I'm going to tell you three reasons why. The first one, information is going to be in flight. Most of the information in the future will be always moving. It's not anymore about service A or service B. It's about the connection of the two and how we make that information always available, always reliable, like water, anytime, anywhere. Most of the problem will be in security and managing that information. One fourth, 25% of all the data will be in motion. And that's where it's going to be the mission critical piece of your company. So information in flight. Second trend, cloud native first. Of course, we're building for a cloud first world. Of course, we're building for a cloud native environments. But hybrid always. Don't forget hybrid. Cloud native is containers based. It's microservice based, needs dynamic orchestration, utilizes at most open source software. But hybrid, it's, it's a lot of more. Hybrid is the history of your company, right? You have hybrid teams, hybrid programming languages, hybrid on-prems, hybrid serverless, different location, different environments, different device. Hybrid is the history of your company. It's where you have most of your workloads. So please welcome on stage Jason from Cargill, the largest private company in the world. Please welcome it. Get it up. Awesome, thank you. Uh, is this on? Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, so I'm Jason Walker, I'm with Cargill. Uh, we are headquartered out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, and what we wanted to do was talk a little bit up here about our purpose and some of the, the content that's coming up later on in the day. And, and Cargill has a purpose of uh, to nourish the world. And we're not gonna be able to do that without a digital transformation in some of our key enterprises. Cargill does business across different types of markets with different types of customer segments. And in order for us to be able to help people thrive, which is part of our vision, the digital transformation is underway. We have some architecture principles that we adhere to, and there's a total of eight of them, but one of the, the key ones that really resonated when, when talking to Augie was, we have a principle of cloud first, but not always. We do business in 70 different countries. We have 150,000 employees worldwide. And we have an interesting dilemma, if you will, of upwards of, of thousands of plant operations across the world. Things like cloud connectivity or cloud native deployments aren't necessarily going to be a thing that we're going to be able to just, like peanut butter spread, go all the way across all of the different areas. But what we can do is have that mindset of what are some of the things that we can introduce to our solutions so we can do things like have better telemetry, have better services, have better uptime, have better data and, and better, better connectivity. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit in the, uh, the later session today, uh, but just wanted to share some of, the, some of that, those details. Thank you. Thank you. So Jason works at one of the oldest companies in the world, the largest private company in the world, and they embody the cloud native first. That's where they're going. But all the workloads are still hybrid. So I don't have data point of this, so I thought Cargill would make better than any data points in the world. Let's move on on the third reason why. Service explosions. We're going from single services, single endpoints, to few, dozen, hundred, thousands, and more. It's a journey. That's the journey of your company. Eventually, you will end up with thousands of endpoints that need to be secure and managed. Successful business obviously are, are service-driven. You can go, you know, 
15, 20 years ago, the way software was consumed, it was only through a website. Then 2008, Steve Jobs goes on stage and announced the iPhone. And a few years later, everybody has to rush through a mobile strategy. That's the first moment where software starts to get decentralized and the way it gets consumed. Then you have iPads. You start to have IoT, Samsung Fridge, Tesla cars, bots, virtual reality. It's going to increase the way your partner, your customers, your family consume software is going to get more and more complex. And so the software response to that complex demand went from being a static monolith running on bare metal in the same way for years into having an API first as a wrapper to consume mobile application, having more and more services, getting in a way more and more liquid. And so I look at Google Trends, and if you notice, in 2000, uh, 14, humanity start to search for microservices. Do you know why? Why do you think there is a spike in 2014 on microservices? Anyone? You got it. <laughs> that was too easy, mate. <laughs> that was a year after Docker made container technology usable. Also, 2014 is when Kubernetes came on and a lot of other open source technology. And so, but more interesting than that, API Gateway start to have a spike as well. Even if that technology was there 10 years before and nobody cares about it. Because we go from one API at umbrella to hundred to thousands, and all of a sudden, API Gateway becomes mission critical. And so people start to search for it. What is this thing? So to our point, service explosions from one to trillions of endpoints, best business will be service driven. So those are the three reasons why. Do you remember number one? Data emotion. Remember number two? Hybrid, cloud native first, hybrid always. And number three, service explosions. Because of these three trends, API management has to evolve, has to get decentralized, has to not only manage layer seven traffic, but also layer four, has to move in a hybrid world, has to connect thousands of endpoints at scale. So we're really going from you know, a single cell enterprise to a multi-seller system. It took billions of years on her to have that transformation, and it won't be easy for enterprise as well. It would take many, many years to go from one service to 100 to 1,000. You can see how we have multiple cell, different cell, how the network becomes what is going to give a lot of volume. And so if enterprise are becoming complex organisms, well, then the services become their network system, their nervous system. So when you are a nervous system, how you are making observable, how you apply governance, how you have efficiency. Introducing the service control platform. <laughs> the service control platforms Intelligent broker, all kind of information from any service, in and out. We thought that that was the category or the name that would merge and evolve API management with microservices. Now, let's get into the pragmatic. How we pragmatically do these digital transformations. How we go from that single cell to multi-cell to thousands and billions of cells, right? This is the history of what a company. It's not necessarily monolith or serverless. The truth is in the middle. 99% of your workload will be a little bit everywhere. And sometimes you just need serverless function for event-driven software. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes even cloud is not, is not maybe what you need for. So in this evolution, where you go from monolith to serverless, you go through stages, right? 
you start to decouple, you start to have, we call it internally the high scream scoop strategy, because you scoop it out, each monolith into services. And then you have a dozen of services, then you have a hundreds. Eventually, you will go through microservice running on Kubernetes at scale, you will have thousands and hundreds of pods that we maybe manage with a single control plane called Edistio inside that service mesh environment or whatever is the next uh, control plane of choice. But you will have software running everywhere anytime. So what you're going to put in some neutral hybrid, some Switzerland of software that goes and connect everything and manage everything from monolith running on bare metal on some Red Hat, all the way to serverless deploying on AWS Lambda. And whatever is going to come up next, protocol change, technology change. But those three points where information will be in flight will never change. Hybrid will never change. We always have hybrid world. And we will go to thousands of endpoints. So why you put that? That can work with all of it. You put Kong. Kong can work on any layer in any infrastructure, from contemplate to service to API gateway, from north-south to east-west. We'll talk more about later. So we have always this open source core, right? We have open source at the foundations. And today, yes, a lot of you use Kong as an API gateway. It's robust. We have one of the best admin API in the industry to control Kong over hundreds of plugins from the community. But we start also to build features for the larger enterprise that needs higher scale, observability, developers onboarding, a lot of enterprise plugins. Today, later today, and tomorrow morning, we are going to double down on open source, but also double down on enterprise. We're going to introduce features in the security space, in the machine learning, and in governance. We're going to add security, machine learning, and governance. And also, the proxy itself will evolve. It will support way more use cases, and it's very exciting. We'll learn a lot about later today. And also, we have a lot of more, right? Those are themes that we set up at the beginning of the year. Kubernetes first, definitely mesh. We need to be open and wide, support more plugins creations, support more serverless deployment. Like, be truly that vendor agnostic Switzerland of software that manage and control all your nervous system of your enterprise. So three things. We've gone through API management is dead. The three reasons why we need hyperscale technology to manage and secure all the information in flight that's coming from any service and any device and needs to be highly distributed and decentralized. You're going to build for cloud native first, and that's what you're going to support. But you also have to support hybrid, because majority of workloads are going to be there for the next 10 years. Right? We spent the last 20 years getting IT inside of our companies. We're going to spend the next 20 ripping it out. Funny, huh? <laughs> and third, because of this, there must be a new category and a new technology, like a service control platform. So why this is not SOA all over again, right? Some of you have scarf of it. This is, looks a lot like an SOA. Why that is not SOA all over again? And we thought a lot about it. And there is obviously many reasons for it. But if we have to really squeeze it down to one main, I think because SOA was driven by vendors, why microservices driven by developers. In this case, Things take off only if they're truly good. They get adopted by you. There is no vendors marketing that are trying to, to push it through you, something that doesn't work. Technology are open source and take off with developer's love. It's you. It's not anymore about the vendor. This changed completely the tau leadership of the landscape. And it will be more and more bottom-up driven decisions in IT. And so in this whole world, open source is not the advantage anymore. 
It's the baseline. It's so cool every time there is something open source, but honestly, we're going to 2020, everything will be open source. And if it's not open source, it's not going to take off. If you are in the infrastructure business, you have to see what's happening into your nervous system. Remember that multi-cells organism, right? You need to have open source. You can't have black box in the middle and you don't know what's going on. That's why most of the technology that are taking off are open source. That's why the microservice revolution, when you saw the spike after 2014, after that year, we've seen hundreds of new open source tools and companies starting in the last four years. Think about how much changed since then. So when you pitch it, it's all about open source. And then, since Apple is not doing it anymore, I thought someone should. Today, we cross 100 enterprise customer. Thank you. Now, this looks like an easy road, but for some of you that might not know, Kong comes from Meshe, which was an API marketplace, the first API marketplace from 2011 to 2017. Kong started about a year ago, August 2017. So Kong is really new. So if you think in a Kong era, we're probably the fastest growing company in the world. But if you, if you count Meshe back, it took eight years. <laughs> and it took eight years to do the first summit. <laughs> and I tell you what, it was worth it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so now we're going to the product announcements, both from open source and enterprise. And with that notes, please welcome on stage my friend, co-founder and CTO, Marco Paladino. That's the vibe. That's the vibe. That's the vibe. Hey, you, man. Yeah. <laughs>